Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar, Connecting Healthcare Consumerization and the Pharma Patient Experience, presented by VMS Biomarketing. I'm Andrea Anderson, and I'll be moderating this webinar. Our speaker today is Andrea Heslin Smiley, President and Chief Executive Officer, VMS Biomarketing. You can read her full bio on the left side of your window by selecting the Speakers tab. Just a few technical notes before we begin. The webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there is no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, please make sure your volume is up. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand within 24 hours after the event. Time permitting, we will follow the presentations with a Q&A session. Please submit your questions using the questions and answers tab on the left side of your screen. All right, let's begin. Andrea, please go ahead. So at VMS, we are focused on patient engagement and we use a platform that we, um, that's called One Voice that uniquely sort of combines data-driven technology and clinical human interventions to deliver what is a holistic patient support that can be delivered in this dynamic and personalized way. And it's through this patient engagement program that our clients have been able to not only build these, you know, strong connecting uh, uh, connections and insights with their consumers, both HCPs and patients, but also then that enables delivering a differentiated overall patient experience that's enhanced through the rich real-world data and insights that are provided by VMS. So today, I'm excited uh, to, I'm excited for you to hear me appropriately and to be able to talk about the transformation that's happening in patient engagement space specifically with the application of artificial intelligence to deliver a superior patient experience. With AI applications, um, we have predominantly seen them being used in drug discovery and development to date. And the vast potential has been seen, you know, driving many companies to start to test even in scale out cases now in the commercial space. And that driving force behind this sort of rapid adoption is the convergence that we're seeing um, between digital technology innovation and unmet needs in the industry. So when we think about sort of unmet needs, there are three big areas where we continue to observe um, opportunities versus wellness or preventative care, things like nutrition, managing and sharing personal health data, consumer genomics, uh, that's one area. Another one is in medical or disease management, in chronic disease, complex disease, rare disease is another sort of uh, similar therapeutic areas. And lastly is consumer or the patient experience, things like telemedicine, mobile engagement, personalization, and education. So these categories, these unmet needs are becoming more and more priority to be addressed. And it's with this prioritization that has driven a lot of advancements in technology just over even the past few years. Uh, what we're finding is that companies are, are coming to market with transformative products and solutions that address wellness, medical, and consumer categories of healthcare where there is this greatest opportunity for impact that then leads to better outcomes for patients. And I think we all would agree this has been a long time in coming. Uh, for the healthcare industry, when we think about the consumer and how they interact with healthcare as compared to how we all interact and engage with consumer electronics, um, with companies like Apple or e commerce companies like Amazon, there are just tremendous gaps. I mean, we could probably even say there's like chasms uh, in terms of the difference uh, in the experience. And so, with the experiences that we all have outside of healthcare, patients, um, consumers, are expecting more from pharma companies and in, in several dimensions that uh, particularly can have the greatest impact as they start and stay on medication to manage their disease. The groundbreaking digital technology and the convergence of escalating importance in these categories in healthcare is what's transforming the landscape and can radically redefine 
the possibilities of how we provide uh, a much differentiated patient experience than one that, that has been associated with the pharma industry. So as a result of this technological advancement and continued focus to address the areas of wellness, medical, and consumer, we're seeing more and more tech solutions in the market that are patient-centric and putting the patient first. Technology like wearables, uh, remote monitoring tools, digital health apps, they're all at the forefront because they build around the patient need and the patient experience to catch up to the consumer experiences, again, that we're all happening, we're having with companies, Apple, Amazon, um, whatever it is, it's sort of the, the consumer experience that is relative to individuals. And so as technology and healthcare has shifted to to bringing forward sort of patient-centric um, abilities, the biopharma industry has simultaneously shifting our own commercial model, and we've been doing this for a while, but from the traditional pill model to building a commercial model that goes beyond just medication. It's thinking more in terms of kind of a platform model, making sure that the approach that is taken is not just singularly focused, but you know, thinking of, of medication to treat an illness. Rather, we're thinking now about wellness, preventative care, the overall patient experience with the pharmaceutical company. And to achieve this platform model, many pharma companies are establishing fully integrated, partner-based, patient-centered ecosystems with all the necessary services, uh, bringing in critical data and other technology products, facilitate a patient experience that is, in fact, beyond the pill and contributing to disease prevention, risk awareness, post-treatment, and, and wellness. So part of this platform model that many biopharma companies are evaluating is how, in fact, artificial intelligent applications in healthcare can be incorporated into the ecosystem across the whole value chain from molecule, if you will, to, to market. And I think with COVID-19, we've seen demonstrated how AI could identify candidates for vaccines and drugs and support in, in conducting trials. And we combine that with far greater healthcare data availability, large advances in cognitive computing and the development of advanced machine learning techniques. So the market size of AI applications has grown rapidly. What I believe IQVIA estimates that AI applications in healthcare yeah, here will grow from, you know, some 700 million six years ago to over 8 billion by the end of this year. And so specifically then in life sciences, we're seeing companies are starting to you know, truly embrace artificial intelligence as well. Deloitte has reported that 60% uh, of companies currently state that they spend about $200 million or so on AI, but all of them are looking and the majority are expecting that this is going to increase in years to come and, and potentially exponentially increase. So through these early investments in artificial intelligence, life sciences companies are have been predominantly looking to make process more efficient. So productivity gains has been the majority focus. 43% of life sciences executives reported in a, a Deloitte survey that AI applications have already made them more efficient as a business. So seeing the, the benefits and there's obviously then um, the, the further fueling more investment in that and, and ways to find other processes that become more efficient. And it is the belief that while AI can make processes more efficient, AI will soon become and should become a central part of business transformation when working on not only existing products and services, but also in creating new products and services. In fact, almost 30% of the companies report that they are now using AI to enhance existing products and create new products and services. So we're seeing folks recognizing this application beyond just automation and process. Uh, improvement gains. So despite, though, the level of all this adoption, um, 
there are challenges. I mean, what possibly could go wrong when, when you're bringing AI in? There, there is actually a fair amount that, that folks are realizing has to first be addressed before there can feel like um, there's the ability to capitalize on all that, that of the promise of AI. First, there's the required data that often may not even be being collected. So is the right data being collected? If data is being collected, is it of the right quality? Um, there's many programs that are lacking ways to even use data. And in addition, there could be capabilities uh, that are missing either internally in the organization or from a solution provider to maximize uh, AI. And then lastly, of course, and we see this across consumer, there has to be incredible diligence uh, and, and, and focus on regulatory and compliance and privacy and sort of ethical aspects of, of how we're using and gathering data. So of these challenges, 28% of organizations report that their top challenge is really being able to integrate AI into organizations and about the same sort of number report that the data challenges are sort of the primary issues. So integrating and, and having the right sort of data. To address these challenges, we're seeing companies putting in place like a number of different uh, tools to accelerate the adoption of AI. One, there is um, sort of the focus around the right just internal IT infrastructure and starting at that point, there's prioritizing use cases of so getting out and, and almost uh, more of an MVP, agile process of, of using AI applications. And then, of course, organizational talent with skill sets to be able to utilize AI so that there is the opportunity for greater adoption, as well as the expectation that, that we've all biopharma should have that solution providers like BMS are, are using AI in an increasing way and have the capabilities to continue to advance that. So um, how is it being used then across the value chain? Many life sciences companies that have adopted AI have already shown its value in making processes more efficient, as I was talking about. And this has been particularly seen, and I think we're all very familiar with uh, the use in R&D and drug discovery to accelerate what traditionally has been a, a very slow and, 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 a, and a time start, a random process and making it much more predictable. Specifically in, in areas um, that target identification and validation and molecular design and patient stratification for trial success is, is where we've, we've used it seen. But we're now seeing how companies are finding that AI has you know, a potential and can be positioned to expand across the entire value chain. The stage is way beyond R&D to manufacturing, supply chain, and of course commercial, which is what we are going to focus in on. And specifically to commercial, uh, Accenture did a, a survey that demonstrated that 90% of life sciences executives recognize that AI has an important role in driving innovation and achieving outcomes on the commercial side, four areas that, again, we, we see in consumer all the time is hyper-personalization experiences and, and there's new sources of growth that, that can be coming from the use of AI and even just new levels of efficiency. And so AI, for sure, can leverage the deep analytical insights to drive better decision-making. And one key area of that on the commercial side is within patient engagement. So that's what we're going to focus this time and sort of our attention on the rest of the presentation is how AI can help in this profound way with patient engagement, um, which is something we're incredibly passionate about because, again, it's, it's, it's the sole focus of BMS and, and also because it, it often is that patient engagement can be, unfortunately, seen as sort of the last mile of, of healthcare delivery. But it's such a crucial component um, that can make all the difference between the good and adverse health outcomes, but it's about how the patient really feels about uh, the situation that they're in and then how that then translates into um, the feeling about the pharma company, about the experience that they had. 
and just ensuring that there is, in fact, you know, the opportunity for them to be able to engage more deeply in, in their health care. So to understand the value that AI can bring in patient engagement, it's helpful to, I think, first kind of back up and think about and understand how patient engagement programs work without uh, AI. So without AI, we are telling technology to follow a linear process. Um, and that's what it can do well. For example, we may tell technology that for this type of adherence with the patient, we want to trigger an intervention at, say, you know, 30 days and do it via a text that, that's better for this patient segment versus, you know, email or through a human interaction at this point. The difference is what, what AI is going to be able to do and is already doing, and we're seeing this, can it can tell a technology where we want to go and have AI help us get there. So, for example, we would be telling the technology we want to optimize how we engage with the patient to drive the greatest level of impact engagement. And the AI would then be able to guide the technology on when we want, you know, when we want to engage with the patient via what channel, rather than explicitly saying it must be 30 days via text. Uh, in addition, AI would be able to sort of leverage data to predict the best time of the day and the best channel for engagement based on how that patient has engaged with the program in the past and or based on the characteristics of that patient that we know offer like the predictive power into all of these variables. So it allows life sciences companies to fully really differentiate on how they engage with patients by creating much deeper connections while filling, you know, often critical support gaps and using resources more efficiently. It helps companies provide better experiences and information so that patients stay on their product and in turn achieve better outcomes. With patient engagement, there are several use cases of how AI is being used today to improve the patient experience and help companies extract more value from their patient support programs. Think about the incredible amount of money that gets put into uh, patient support programs. There's, there's truly uh, kind of an untapped potential for value that can be extracted through the rich data that is that is um, that is being right now um, uh, seen within patient support programs that that is you know sitting within call centers and not being fully utilized. Where AI is going to be able to leverage more and more is using and seeing patients becoming more welcoming of uh, these technologies. In fact, we've we've seen that, and in an Accenture study that as we're bringing this technology to patients uh, in all sorts of different ways that we know that, that they're looking for support to be a key way that they're, that they're getting technology and there is more acceptance of that happening in sort of an AI way. So specific use cases of AI in patient engagement. Um, the first one is AI is being used to better anticipate patient needs and personalize patient interventions to provide patients with best next actions. We know that in even more convenient care models. Oops, thank you. There, there we go. Um, and more specifically, there are sort of five kind of core use cases in market today that I'm going to walk through that we're seeing a, a number of the companies that we're working with extract more from their patient support investments. One is the use of AI in interaction analytics, my favorite, which is providing clients with greater insights into the patients and their needs from frontline conversations. As we said, the sort of untapped uh, riches of, of information out there um, from frontline conversations with patients and interventions that are happening. There's the use of AI to personalize the engagement, incredibly important, which is allowing pharma to deliver, as we said, sort of this hyper-individualized experience for patients that's specific to them. We all want to, like, people know who we are, treat us, you know, individualized, not even, you know, even the segments that we're doing now are not nearly as, as uh, specific and thoughtful as, as, as they should be. And so there is the opportunity for much greater personalization. 
there's the use of AI to just optimize services, which is enabling brands to make their engagement more dynamic and allow it to become more intelligent over time, uh, which then also further drives the right outcome, assuming that, of course, we all change over time, so we should have the technology be changing accordingly. And last, sort of, um, not yet, last, actually, second to last, is AI to deliver self-serve or automated care, which often is more convenient. Uh, we know this, again, in, in the consumer world, and likewise with patients, um, there's times where the information you're looking for, you want it to be self-serve or provided in a very seamless, convenient way. And in doing so, it uses up also fewer human capital resources and thus is more efficient from a spend perspective. Lastly is AI um, and how that's used for risk management in patient engagement programs, which enables this higher quality and being able to look, you know, much more deeply at programs to be able to ensure fewer compliance deviations and, and maybe learn from from those deviations in, in a more specific way. So we're going to look at each of these one at a time, and we'll start with, again, my favorite, which is AI interaction analytics. So for interaction analytics, what we're talking about is the high volume and variety of data that is captured through patient engagement programs that to date has been difficult to make actionable. And I think there's many folks where this has been incredibly frustrating. We know there is um, sort of this treasure trove of, of information, and yet there hasn't been a way to really turn that information into something that, that can be usable. Now with natural language processing, a form of AI, as we all know, we can much better capture the voice of the patient at scale by mining all this data and reporting on it in a systematic way. The benefit of natural language processing is that it can be applied to obviously structured and unstructured data across silos. It's it's helping already, you know, a number of companies create a voice of the market, if you will, feedback loop for key business areas such as medical affairs, market access, sales, brand teams. You're seeing them all use it. And by using NLP, natural language processing, to mine data captured from patient engagement programs like call recordings, as I was saying, the types of insights that can be captured and segmented by type of patient or at the time in therapy professions are, are things like, you know, key topics that are being discussed by patients. Is, is there something that is disproportionately coming up right now than, than we have seen in the past? Sentiment analysis of, of how patients are and, and sentiment analysis, again, that's looking over an entire patient journey and, and understanding how that sentiment has changed. Uh, and even the ability to run sort of ad hoc queries on the data for specific strategic questions, for positioning, for brand messaging um, that need to be addressed. So, and those are just a few. I mean, I think there's also a huge application even um, to take this data and be applying it to earlier stage to understand about new indications and uh, trial patients um, that should be, you know, identified and, and needs of those patients differently in the clinical trial setting. So with interaction analytics, brands now get like a brand new level of context that often gets missed. And I think context is so important because today patient engagement programs are reporting on things like activity data, there's self-reported adherence data, um, and you could even be measuring things, you know, test versus control comparisons of persistency and adherence. But with AI, and those are really important areas to be to be measuring, for sure, but not enough. And um, and the key piece is that with AI, and particularly with natural language processing technology, uh, it allows for sort of this the rich insight sharing that contextualizes all this other data and offers a much clearer picture into what's happening. Um, with the patient, so as an industry, 
we can do more to drive value in the patient engagement program design and, and even more broadly than that. So next is how we are personalizing the engagement. For personalization of, of patient engagement, the primary use of AI is to achieve much more complex segmentation of patients. While many patient engagement programs today can be one size fits all, or maybe even just sort of the basic levels of segmentation, uh, AI allows for infinite levels of highly specific segmentation so that we can deliver an individualized, personalized experience to each patient. We see this again, and we know this in the consumer world, and this is something we just expect from within consumer, but it's not something, again, that has been applied uh, nearly as broadly as, as it can be and, and, uh, within healthcare, and in particular, we haven't seen it as much in, in patient engagement. But we're seeing now that while you know, some patients may require an in-depth, high-touch intervention, such as in-person um, uh, virtual engagement, whereas others may respond to something as simple as or a text message reminder. What AI will help us to create and execute are patient experiences that maximize engagement and outcomes that's analyzing data points to create these individual experiences. So patient engagement using AI helps to determine the best way to reach the patient, the best time to reach the patient, and even what the, the most optimal message is and how that needs to change over time. So for a lot of patient engagement programs, this determination is based off data that informs the patient's level of adherence risk and likelihood to of being influenced by those interventions. With AI, this level of personalization can be also much more fluid. The predictive models can gain predictive power, I think, which is kind of the coolest thing. Because as we collect more and more data on how the decisions that were made through, you know, on how decisions that were made through AI based on patient risk level and likelihood of being influenced, we can then look how that correlates to true impact and success. Now, so optimization of services. In addition to upfront personalization with AI, we can deliver um, AI applications that can be used to make the patient journey responsive to real-world data and truly optimized. And when we say optimization, what I mean by that is uh, that AI ensures that what, what we're providing to each patient is, is individualized in a different way than what I was talking about in the previous slide but much more so that it's actually very dynamic and it's learning and it's, and it's you know, understanding and providing and giving the patient what they need in the moment that they need it. It's a term that we often all use, but there's often not, not means for us to be able to fully assess that and particularly to anticipate those needs. In, in, with AI, we're being able to um, help technology drive to what you want, which is a better outcome for the patient. And it's doing that by continually monitoring and learning from the information it receives and on um, what is driving sort of the greatest impact. So an example of this is while patients are in a support program, AI technology can continually monitor new information and changes to information that are observed about a patient and then provide recommendations to the resources delivering the patient engagement, so such as nurse educator, as, as we could be then using within VMS, and it, it's, it's serving up to that nurse educator what the next best action should be. And so, for instance, if there's a change in the characteristics of a patient's environment that influences their predictive adherence risk score, AI can generate a recommendation to the nurse educator on how and what they should communicate with that patient based on those changes. Um, Another example is the data that's being provided on the patient progress. We can be utilizing triggers like just-in-time interventions based on machine learning algorithms that are consistently learning how changes and evolution of a patient's progress on therapy should correspond to the timing and the type of interventions to patients. 
And this is so important because it's just-in-time interventions uh, that make all the difference of keeping a patient adherence or, or not adherence. A last example is if a patient responds well to one type of communication channel or intervention at a certain type of day, it can then influence the go-forward approach that is used to engage with that patient at that time of day, and, and it, again, serves that up uh, within the, the programming. So um, automated care is also a key way for us to to be using AI. And it, what we've seen is there has been a number of advances in this uh, with the number of chat boxes that have been integrated into our daily lives with consumer. And, and of course, we're now seeing this really across, I think, the majority of healthcare websites. There are always regulatory issues in healthcare that requires for careful considerations of this tactic and the convenience that these tools can offer to patients um, is important, and we're continuing to assess that. But um, we're looking at how we're how we're ensuring that regulatory issues aren't uh, aren't aren't happening because of there's real time texting and that sort of thing that could be happening in real time communications. But because there has been such a um, adoption of this, obviously within the consumer world, and because there is just an incredible level of convenience. That, that patients have that is driving brands to be incorporating this again across uh, even patient engagement programs. One significant improvement is the underlying technology that's powering Chatbox, um, and it's a shift from rule-based AI to this full na uh, natural language processing power Chatbox. So what we've seen is that Natural language processing powered chat box can not only respond to patient queries, um, which again is, is, is expected, but it can more quickly and accurately also uh, have sort of this level of empathy that, um, and incorporate that that wasn't possible even just a few years ago uh, when we were using rule-based AI. So we're seeing that, that this automated care not only you know provides convenience, but it's also becoming much more effective. This emotional appropriateness is um, you know that delivers a more effective message is key, particularly when we're communicating about health and when we're communicating to patients. And we know this well from many of our experiences uh, that we all have, uh, even as patients, and and what often gets talked about in terms of sort of poor bedside manner of of doctors, often there isn't empathy that, that is probably when it's needed most is within healthcare because it's such an emotionally driven um, topic and it's often not seen as well. So it can be then in fact a, a true differentiator. And so incorporating NLP, natural language processing technology into Chatbox has allowed for uh, better experience and level engagement by patients when they're using these automated self-serve tools. So there's, there are actually three major ways that chat box are being used in pharma patient engagement today. Um, we're seeing it in condition assessment tool to drive patients to speak with a doctor. We see it in quick search functionality uh, to help patients find the information they need quickly, efficiently, and logistics concierge to streamline access and fulfillment processes. And of course, a major benefit of using AI-powered chatbot um, is when the solution is, uh, is able to focus, it, it's enabling and, and allowing uh, folks to be able to be served up options quicker, and it then allows the, the farm company to focus human capital resources on patients that truly need it or on topics when they truly need to have a, a human intervention. A final use case that um, I want to walk through is how companies are increasingly applying AI to help with identifying, monitoring, and addressing risk to support compliance. So traditionally, compliance functions have had to set priorities and then monitor activities with highest potential for compliance risk since it's impossible or 
very difficult to get coverage of all different activities. Um, if you think about sort of spot check audits, it's good, but it's, it's not perfect. And there's this continued effort, emphasis uh, on proactively monitoring risk. So compliance staff you know, can have difficulties keeping up with the vast amount of information compliance programs are expected to monitor, and that's the complexity that continues to happen in terms of the, 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 how the data is coming in and patient engagement, how that's delivered through multiple channels today. So it, it becomes uh, it's a difficult process in the first place, and it's continuing to become even more difficult. So applying, a, applying AI solutions can help proactively identify deviations, prioritize compliance risks, and improve efficiency of uh, the quality and compliance teams. And an example of that that we're seeing actually being applied um, more and more uh, across pharma companies is through adverse events. It's um, where we're seeing that through the growing volume of adverse event data that stems from specialty and complex medications, companies are being able to use AI to, to help identify you know, common issues, uh, get to root cause, and, and have um, processes put in place much more quickly to, to address those. So huge benefits of AI. Um, and I think there's, there's no one that isn't excited about the potential of AI across healthcare and, and the importance um, for all the different reasons that, that we've talked about. And yet, it's not sufficient. It is, it's essential, but not sufficient. Despite all the use cases, AI for patient engagement and the rapid adoption um, that we're seeing in the market, it's so important for us to remember that AI is meant to augment and enhance the human element of patient engagement and not replace it entirely. And I actually think that COVID experiences have, have probably allowed all of us to really feel this personally, that technology has been a great way to be able to, you know, stay um, in touch with individuals, but it hasn't replaced what, what real human connection uh, enables us um, to have in terms of building deep relationships. And even as AI continues to complement existing capabilities in patient engagement, empower them to be more impactful, it won't be able to fully replicate the human connection overall that's integral in patient engagement programs. Most apparent is, of course, the lack of EQ or emotional intellect that AI has or doesn't have. Even with advancements, um, as we were talking about with natural language processing, there's, there's limitations uh, and there's places where technology can't really replace soft skills that are key to building connections with patients. AI lacks intuition, um, sensitivity, uh, you know, and, and they're working on continuing to improve sort of even empathy, but, but in, in full, it's not providing kind of a, a much more um, fully, a full picture of a patient if you're just using AI. And so it's, it's missing key aspects of support that patients we know need, the empathy and the understanding and sensitivity to overcome challenges and addressing needs that they have. Related to this sort of lack also of emotional intellect is um, the ability to build trust and sustain relationships. Patients don't typically build lasting connectivity with AI. Uh, it may make experiences better at points in time, but there's typically no ongoing relationship that can be forged between these points in time. Because humans share their feelings and can understand and um, interpret and react feelings of others, human connection is what allows for a relationship to be formed with the patient, and we believe is absolutely critical and what is the key success factor for um, the adherence levels that we've been able to achieve. At the same time, AI is also constrained on how it's able to solve problems. So unlike humans, there um, is a limit to how creative AI can be. Of course, we're continuing to work on that, but until then, as new issues arise or more complex situations come up along the patient journey, 
humans can navigate those scenarios uh, better at times versus AI alone. Much better with AI, but it's, again, sort of the combination of the two is, is the most powerful. Powerful. And then lastly, there's another component of AI, and that's often um, that it's, it's used often within a silo. That is, it's, it doesn't have, uh, it's not tapped into sort of a, a broader, complete picture and a context around a patient's situation. And context can often be a driver of how patient engagement approaches should change. And so the human element is critical to understanding this context. And and bringing it alive and taking into consideration when delivering patient engagement. What's clear is that AI has arrived in healthcare and it is, it's having not only a profound impact, I think we all know that it's going to have a uh, exponentially increasing one. It's already starting to bring some sort of these sweeping changes to both how healthcare is delivered and how players throughout the healthcare ecosystem conduct business, for example, you know, providers, payers, and direct-to-consumer healthcare companies. To keep an even set pace, pharma organizations are going to have to look beyond isolated AI organization, uh, applications sorry, and have to think um, beyond AI as add-ons to their existing systems and processes and truly rethink the commercial model much more holistically with AI being at the core. I think those companies that that are and continue to embrace AI as a foundation of their technology strategy and learn and fail and learn and fail um, will see exponential gains in the value of their products and service offerings. Uh, as we're already starting to see with patient engagement programs where biopharma has started to leverage it. And, we know that in just a few years, we are going to see that AI will shift from really a nice to have to a need to have within the life sciences industry. And I think we're seeing that shift happen now. So thank you so much. Again, apologies for the, the difficulties up front, but I would love to now take any questions that the group has, Andrea. Now what? I guess yes, we, will yes, be we will now. We will, uh, we will now be moving on to the Q&A. There's still time to submit your questions using the Q&A tab to the left of your screen. We have a lot of great questions already and we'll try to get to as many as possible. So for right. the first question, did you wanna go ahead and read them? Yeah, I can, I can pull them off here. I've got them, thank you so much. Sounds great, yes. Okay, so um, thank you. Number of great questions coming in. Here's one. Um, do you believe the use of AI for patient engagement will be a capability pharma builds internally or partners with solution providers on? Great question. Really great question. So um, this is still an emerging capability for the industry, and it's still, uh, I think, the minority of brands that uh, integrate AI um, is it, it is not sort of a, a core component uh, of brands as they're integrating this into their current programs today, into their patient engagement programs. Um, but I do believe that it will become, you know, a, a bigger and bigger component of what's happening with patient engagement. And what we're typically finding is that biopharma companies are are still early in their own development of internal AI capabilities and recognizing what, you know, what pharma companies are best at are, are, are developing and commercializing drugs and uh, that there are others that, that have uh, greater capabilities that can be um, leaned on in terms of providing, you know, the technolo technological advancements that, that would be necessary and the continued improvement on those. And so thus, um, we've seen a number of companies going forward leaning position to utilize AI uh, by using and looking for partnerships with solution providers who have this depth of expertise in incorporating AI tools into patient engagement programs. I think the landscape of solution providers doing this at scale today isn't that large and is 
really concentrated with those that are focused primarily on patient engagement versus other types of pharma commercial programs. I hope that answered it. Um, okay, the next question is, uh, how has the role of human connection evolved as AI has been integrated into patient, oh, how, how has the role of human connection evolved as AI has been integrated into patient engagement programs? Okay, yes, I think, first of all, yes, the role has evolved. And I think it will continue to evolve rapidly um, as I, AI gets integrated into patient engagement programs. Just a little bit of what we were talking about at the end, like the best of all worlds is the combination. Um, so as I shared earlier, AI will not be a replacement for a human connection that's so pivotal in patient engagement and support. The emotional intellect ability to think outside the box, visibility into the complete picture, all the things I was talking about, context as well, are, are all things that will make AI and the human connection work together versus AI working on its own. And with that shift, I think um, we'll see resources in patient engagement programs delivering uh, human connection like through nurse educators, not only be able to be trained on how they should be using AI, but they're also going to be able to be used in, in more efficient ways. And they're going to be able to enable and empower them to recognize where there are gaps, where you can apply human capital, and how is that sort of, you know, the, the greatest impact for the patient in return for, for the pharma company. Um, I think another piece of this is uh, with AI as an enablement tool for even you know, more effective and, and personalized human connection. The human supporting patients can help to support in a much more meaningful way and can, um, can get sort of data-driven recommendations, as I said, for best actions. And then, and then think through those and, sort of, you know, use contextualized uh, their own human information to say, does that make sense? Am I going to act on that? But it's teeing up a lot more um, opportunities and ideas for, for humans than, than our like nurse educators very well may have on their own. Let's see. I think um, I'm going to do one or two more questions. Andrea, here's one. Um, how do human resources that are part of a patient how do human resources that are a part of patient engagement programs like nurse educators need to evolve their training and approach with AI now being incorporating into patient engagement programs? That's great. So with AI now being incorporated, how do we need to change sort of our approach with human capital? It's a really great question, and it's um, uh, an incredibly important component, I think, for all service providers that are using AI. Is how are they ensuring that the teams are actually up to speed on exactly what's the best way to capitalize. Nurse educators and other types of resources that are responsible for delivering you know, the human connection and patient engagement programs need to be trained on the AI applications um, and how, they're, how they need to be working and using them behind the scenes. This will you know, involve all kinds of providing um, providing context and understanding of the fundamentals of how the technology works, as well as an overview of what information and what data it's using to make the decision. So helping, helping those that are using it understand why these, why these best next actions are, are coming forward, which then helps them to you know, better um, utilize them and have, have faith in, in the information that's coming forward. I think in addition to sort of this training, having now this foundational understanding, nurse educators would need to understand how the AI recommendations um, uh, and, for example, sort of personalization or the next best action or the next best sort of just in intervention can be incorporated and should be incorporated throughout the workflow process. Uh, companies are doing this through kind of extensive simulations and training ahead of market launches to ensure that uh, Human capital, nurse educators, um, uh, other types of uh, navigation services are comfortable with the advanced technology that's being used 
enable them and, and making sure that actually it is not getting in the way of an interaction, but it is in fact um, supporting an overall relationship with the patient. And I'm going to do one last one, and I, I think we'll be able to close it out, Andrea. Um, question here, are there specific therapeutic areas disease or disease states where AI has greater applicability for patient engagement? Um, you know, it's, it's a great question. I, I don't believe that there should sort of be a limit uh, of the application of AI to specific therapeutic areas of disease states because um, we want to make every interaction more meaningful and uh, more personalized and thus help deliver sort of better outcomes. But there are for sure areas um, where disease that can be more complex or even in the rare or ultra rare diseases where holding on to every single patient and really being able to give a, a, a hyper personalized experiences um, is incredibly uh, invaluable and, and necessary. So I think there's places where it can have some opportunity to have even more impact because there's a lack of, of the kind of support that's needed today. So it could differentially provide um, a more positive experience um, today. But across the board, we of course believe that AI has, has an application um, for every therapeutic area because it's allowing us to get smarter, better, and, and more personalize our engagements. So Andrea, I think we can end it there and um, thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation and for answering those questions for our audience. Thank you for attending this Fierce Pharma webinar and for submitting so many great questions. I'd like to thank our speaker for participating and VMS Biomarketing for presenting today's webinar. This webinar has been recorded. You will be able to access the recording within 24 hours using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. Thank you again for joining, and we look forward to seeing you at future events.